New York, the city that never sleeps. Eight million souls burning brightly in a concrete jungle, illuminated by Broadway signs, exciting opportunities, and fleeting dreams. For centuries, it has been home to vampires from a diverse diaspora. From canines in native populations who walked amongst their people as ghostly presences, to the later European colonialists, of which quickly made the New World their bountiful blood bag. However, this is a city of severe contradictions, and often deadly ones at that. To some, it is paradise on Earth, to others, merely Sodom revived. The futile battles which plague the city streets are but child's play to the shadows which may lurk within the deep depths of Manhattan. Vampires themselves may appear nightmarish in their own right, but underneath the swamps of concrete and steel lies an entity vastly unknown. Some say it's moved on. Some say it was never there in the first place. Only one man has ever looked at its form and lived to tell the tale. A tale that no one will believe. A creature so vile, so repugnant, that one glance will even break an elder vampire's mind. This is the story about the end of the world, and why it will come from New York's fetid underground. So, if you enjoy gritty stories from dark universes, or want to know more about the world of darkness, perhaps leave a like, or even subscribe, as it helps the channel immensely. Vampire folklore is obsessed with many things, but none are stronger than the tales of the Antediluvians and the apocalyptic event known as Gehenna. The kindred sect known as the Sabbat are well known to believe in such folklore, transforming it into a religion more so than just myths. Gehenna, for the unacquainted, is the rising of the Antediluvians, the third generation of vampires who turned against their sires, the second generation, thus invoking the dreadful wrath of Cain, the first vampire. The Antediluvians, to those that believe in Nodis scripture, are the ultimate undoing of vampire kind. They exist as a looming presence which will devour all of their children, all of the subsequent generations up until present nights, and will reduce the world to an apocalyptic state. They are the coming of the end times, and many vampires, especially those within the Sabbat, fight tooth and nail to prevent this from happening, even if those ancient tales may all be but false. However, despite the stories of the Antediluvians being mostly millennia-old gospel, some utterances leak into modern nights. The tale tonight comes from a vampire known as Lambac, and details his nightmarish experience of encountering an Antediluvian of one of the most feared clans in vampiric history, the Zamishi Antediluvian known as the Eldest. Lambach Ruffin's tale is, to put it simply, a tragedy. He was there during the first Anarch Revolt, and saw the events which led the Anarch leader Lugoj allegedly diabolizing the Eldest. He has survived an interesting, yet somewhat cursed, unlife. Many myths and legends are attached to his name. Some regard him as a Methuselah, an elder vampire of low generation. Others see him merely as a coward, who remains broken by the strains of many centuries of enduring the horrors of the world of darkness. His personal story is a long one, and something I may save for another installment. Lambach is a member of the aforementioned Sabbat. As perhaps one of the eldest members of the sect, his experiences with ancient vampiric powers may appear like the ramblings of a madman, but perhaps there is some truth within his drunken utterances. For context, New York was famously a haven of the Sabbat. It was a city maintained by the sect's disdain for mortal life. Within the 1920s, a Camarilla-aligned Ventru known as Michaela moved her domain from Pennsylvania to New York, after spotting an opportunity to make her fortunes within the vastly kindred-free stock exchange, which led her to becoming one of the most influential vampires in the nation. She claimed the domain within New York, existing mainly within Wall Street, which drew the attention of Archbishop Polonia, a Sabbat Crusader besought on conquering all of the east coast of America, taking it back from Camarilla control. In late 1998, Polonia sought peace talks with Michaela, but such were merely a farce. Polonia, assisted by his pack, took the head of Prince Michaela from her shoulders, and sent her court running with their tails tucked between their legs. The city fell into Sabat hands, yet it would only be a couple of years before a violent coup d'etat, led by Nosferatu Calabros, saw Sabat rule come to a crushing end. 
It was then that Lambach sought to aid Polonia in his battles against the Camarilla. On the third day of the coup, the Sabat gathered their forces in a counterattack. Although known as a coward to vampiric society, Lambach proved his mettle within the fight. Polonia and Lambach stood side by side, with the Archbishop's sword cleaving through many Camarilla corpses. Was Lambach called upon his blood to meld through the earth and appear behind his foes to vanquish them with horrifying ease? The Sabat won the night, taking 20 Camarilla to their final deaths. But this success would only be in vain. By the fourth night, the dwindling Sabat forces took their final stand, yet the overwhelming power of the Camarilla was enough to send both Polonia and Lambac into hiding, and the Sabat into obscurity within the city. Lambac, defeated, remained within New York. His existence as a wayward vampire within the city was dismal, yet it was relatively peaceful in comparison to what he was about to witness. An entity so terrifying, so malignant to the mind, that it would shatter what remained of his soul forever. There is little place in Manhattan, in the northeastern Bronx known as Heart Island. On this island, inmates from the prison on Rikers Island dig mass graves for those that cannot afford private burial. Apart from the hordes of corpses, however, no one lives on Heart Island. It is said that the corpses on the island are innumerable, in some cases five layers deep, stacked many feet under the dirt. Most of the buildings upon the island were demolished to make room for more burial sites, yet one structure remains. The old tuberculosis sanatorium. Ruthven, supposedly, was led here. Under the mass of decomposing bodies and long lost souls, a Zantosa slave, in service to their Zamishi overlords, led the vampire down a series of tunnels. These started as abandoned hospital passages, decaying and thick with mold and detritus. As he delved deeper, the passages became wet, with the tunnels drenched with an abnormal ooze which slicked the ground he trudged upon. Skulls and bones littered the way, with darkness consuming every nook and cranny of this forbidden space. Life was not meant to exist within this subterranean abyss, but something surely existed deep within. The darkness of these depths was enough to dim a vampire's supernatural senses, and the passages of which he traversed quickly became narrow and tight. What lay within the cradle of this nightmarish pit was something beyond what Lambach could bear. His eyes illuminated upon a great hulking being, amorphous in nature, inconceivable to the mortal brain. Its shape had metamorphosed past what any would believe to be a living thing. It was bestial, yet above that of a beast. It was godly, yet cursed in every manner. And yet, it relayed its truth upon Lambac. This creature, if you could call it even that, was an antediluvian, the eldest, his blood father. It had been protecting Lambac ever since the man had seen Lugoj supposedly diablerize its form, yet this was a trick of the highest degree. Now it had transcended its bodily form, it relayed to Lambac it had been protecting him to ensure that its history would be told and chronicled, that every step of Lambac's on life was aided by its ungodly power. It had fused with the earth and become one with it, and now it wished for its debts to be repaid, to assimilate Lambac's body with its own. Violently refusing, the beast snared the vampire's arm, trapping it in an impossible grip. Raging against the vice-like hold, the man's strength was just enough to rip his own arm from its socket, causing a gory tear within both his body and his mind. As he broke free, he innately scurried away from the hulking terror which lay within those horrific depths. Clawing his way back to the lich yards of Heart Island, Lambac managed to preserve his unlife at the cost of having witnessed one of the greatest terrors known to vampire kind. He attempted to tell his tale to any that would listen, but none would take heed of his apocalyptic cries. There were many tales spoken of Lambac. Some say he fed the great beast vast swathes of unwanted mortals. Some say he gave way for the antediluvian to exit its confines. But perhaps we should hear it from the man himself, when he spoke directly to the vampire scholar Cuthbert Beckett. An antediluvian? You are seriously telling me that there is an antediluvian sleeping in the sewers under New York? Not in the sewers, and not sleeping. It has not truly slept, I think, for some hundreds of years. Its mind is relentlessly active. 
Its soul, it has thousands of eyes to see through after all, and thousands of hands through which to act. Whatever the Sabbat may claim, it did not burn when the towers fell. You sound very certain. I am very certain. My ancestor has changed greatly over the centuries, Mr. Beckett. But it is consistent in one thing. It does not wish to be alone. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this installment. I've been on vacation for the last couple of weeks, but it's been amazing catching up with the comments and suggestions. All of your feedback has been extremely helpful. There are lots of nuances to this story, with canon consistently evolving and changing. So do let me know if you want me to make another video on the subject, clarifying any details. If you enjoyed this video, it would mean the world if you left a like, or even a comment, letting me know what you thought. If you really enjoyed it, perhaps even subscribe. The support recently has been amazing, and it's been great seeing you all contribute to this series. And so, until next time, stay safe, and don't wander naively into the night.